Do you compare yourself to the successes of each other? How do you not feel intimidated by the successes of siblings? In feel inspired rather than pressure to live up to them. I definitely I don't. don't. <laughs> I feel like I have... feel lazy around you. I don't know how you do all that. I'm not planning on doing any of that. <laughs> Except you totally do. Okay. Here, I got you on a podcast. Now you're yeah, podcasting now whether I'm you podcasting. want to or not. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll step back. I don't care. <laughs> no, I think we all just kind of have our own things going on, you know? Like yeah. we all have. Even though we're doing similar things, it's still different. My name is Lisa, mother of eight and creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. All right, Victor is joining me on the podcast today, along with two of my sisters. So you might know Laura from our early house. I've had her on the podcast twice now? I think so. And then my youngest sister, Andrea. So we are missing one sister. She's the one that sells meat. So this is Andrea. She has a YouTube channel called Our, sorry, Sweet Our, Sunny, Our Day. Sweet Sunny Day. She just had a name change, so I'm still trying to remember it. So I put out a Q&A and I asked for guests that you all wanted on here. And I got asked repeatedly for my sisters. So I don't have one of my sisters here today, but I did drag these two into it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't yet follow them, head on over to Our Oily House and Our Sweet Sunny Days. They share similar content, only Andrea has a very much of a younger generation flair to hers. So <laughs> if you like a lot more color, um, maybe, I don't know, talk about your channel. Meals for two because she yeah, has it's one. more it's more like younger mom, new mom, yes. new, yeah, new mom, mom new homemaking. mom homemaking that with would be the, good. yes color with lots <laughs> with of color. color. She has a very beautiful mid-century home. That's and, where we are, which is where no, we are. Yeah, this is our so house. you can catch a slight glimpse of Andrea's mid-century home if you're watching this on YouTube. Of course, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, you're not. But I took questions for the sisters. So I thought it'd be fun to not just do a Q&A on my own, but a Q&A with my sisters. So let's see what you all have to ask. And we'll, we're just gonna chat for probably about 30 minutes and then we gotta be places, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you think was helpful growing up that made you all so hardworking and creative? How did your parents raise such entrepreneurs? I have talked about this a bit on here because I did my entrepreneurial journey and uh, my parents are entrepreneurs. What What do you guys think? I was, <laughs> was going to say that. Like, yeah, that's, just monkey that's, see, monkey do. Right. Yeah. And they're both very, very hardworking people. Yes. Yeah. Like, more so than They me, don't for sit sure. still. <laughs> no. yeah, not at all. So our parents are currently retired, but like a lot of retired people, they have probably much more going on in retirement than they did before. Yeah. They're busier than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah me too. They're busy. So I think there's just a, an energy that is somewhat genetic going on. I would oh, definitely absolutely. say it's genetic. Yeah. And not even just with our parents, like with the whole, yeah. the whole even family, our extended, extended family. family. Yeah. It's very genetic. Yes. For sure. And as far as creative, I always feel like everybody's creative. You know, I think it's, everybody yeah. is creative. And so I think just your willingness to try things like Andrea is talking about in here, like trying to convince her husband to get vintage uh, double oven. She's got a vintage <laughs> Hopefully refrigerator. You'll see it on the channel soon. So, <laughs> so maybe when you have just the bravery to try such things, it comes off as creative. Well, I do think we get that from dad. Okay. Do like, you feel it's that way? Yeah. He's dad like, tries all kinds of stuff. Yeah, he, no, he did. <laughs> like, I mean, like who else had an elk business? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we grew up on an elk farm. That's who, pretty who unique. Does, who does that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So instead of raising cattle, which we had that as well, and chickens and pigs, he we, went for elk. He decided that we should have our whole property fenced Like with, a lot of elk at yeah, one time. Yeah. Like, like a whole business. Yeah. Whole so that's, that's a elk, whole weird thing. Like 60 that at a time or something. Like maybe people elk. don't know about. Yeah. Is, that's crazy. Back in the 90s, there was a market for elk. Do you know why? I you know, people why? always I ask was, that. They yeah. always ask, like, what was it for, like, selling for the meat? They they bought and sold. It we wasn't didn't eat, for the meat, We didn't though, eat our because own Because they were worth more than that would have. But why? I there don't know few, either. It was kind of a. dad on I here. was too young. 
Yeah. Well, I know that there was that velvet. Yeah, and the yeah. antlers. I know. The, the velvet, the velvet pills. Pills. Some people use that for medicine or something. Yeah, they had velvet pills. And so that, but what the thing, true? The thing yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, they did. We had them. Oh, yeah, Dad took velvet pills. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> I remember taking them. Yes. See, they were eight. I was eight when they sold it. Okay, and I was I, 19. 19. So I, I remember so taking velvet pills. Uh huh. Wild. Mm-hmm. I don't. Okay, I don't know if that was a, enough to sustain the elk market, but it did drop just as drastically as so it was like wild, and then it 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 dropped by like divided by ten basically. Yeah. I, you know, in my kid brain, I had the amount I knew the amounts Dad could sell a female calf for a male calf, or so a bull calf, and then um, a, a full grown. So you call that an elk cow. And a bull. I knew these numbers. It was a lot. Like, I literally have it in my brain, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, the exact yeah. amounts. And by the time Dad sold it all out, uh, it was literally one-tenth. Yeah. And the numbers would probably shock you, but I it don't want to say lot. just in case I'm, like, mixing things up. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a lot. So, oh, anyways. Interesting. That to say, Dad tries weird yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> That's what gives you the... Next question. Yeah. <laughs> That's what gives you the idea that you can get a vintage double oven. I mean, you Smart. might you might not if you're... If your husband, you know, yeah. voice of reason. Yeah, the voice of reason. <laughs> but if you do, I would say that there's whenever you try things, you end up coming up with new ideas, therefore lots of creative ideas. And of course, Andrea loves to sew and create. Laura does creativity in a different way. She likes to cook and experiment in the kitchen. That's true. Yeah, because I and wouldn't Andrea consider too, myself but creative, but I guess I know, but in you some are ways, everybody is creative to some ways. extent. Yeah. Like I, yeah. yeah. Growing up, how did your parents establish a strong and commitment to family? So I feel like we are all very close. I, you know, in my adult life, my best friends are my sisters. Do you feel like mom and dad did something or is it just how it is? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we had like, we did everything together growing up. I mean, you know, we ate meals as a family. Every night that we were dinner, home, yeah. we had dinner together as a family. We did lots of vacations together. We always like vacation. childhood memories. I'm picturing it like everyone kind of together, and they always had a healthy marriage, which just has to help. That's true. Like they were never miserable parents to be around, and they still very much enjoy each other. Yeah, mom and, and dad really like being together. Yeah, they, they just yeah. drove to Colorado and back in a vehicle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they took the long way. They took the long they way. They deliberately took the drives. long way. Yeah, the like scenic why, route. Yeah, why the scenic route on the way to Colorado from Missouri? Always. Dad always does the scenic route. Yes. And mom still, which I'm sure a lot of these people know we talk about all the time, on my all of us, but like every single Sunday has us out for yeah. dinner and cooks like this big meal every Sunday so no one wants to miss it because mom's making yeah. a big meal for us. So like yeah. everyone gathers at least once a week for that. There's so in our adult lives, that is very yeah. much a factor. Yes. Yeah, and she's so been like, doing that since, I mean, Ruth was born so how old were you then like you were even in your kid oh life gosh, i mean you were yeah. still living well, in i remember there. for a while me and ruth are only 12 years apart so but, you but like i remember 12. for a while mom would have to sometimes go go to soccer yeah because i was because you were soccer. yeah but we would still go but mom yeah. would be away with do, doing soccer games because i was only back. 12 yeah i know yeah. so i couldn't you drive were still <laughs> yeah she Whoa. wanted to take you to soccer yeah, Whoa. Whoa. i remember going up there and then they had to leave and come back but anyways yes the we always did vacations nothing like you know, elaborate. We went to the lake every summer, every summer. summer. Mountains, and every then we went winter. to the mountains to ski. We drove mm-hmm. out to Colorado every winter. That's mm-hmm. still a long-standing tradition that we yep. still take part in. Yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> Freshly on your mind. Yeah, yep. just did it. And also, you know, every family, like when you're kids, we fight. Like I, I always try to remember that with my kids whenever they have little, you know, things that come up, like. I fought with Laura. We fought. A I mean, lot. we yeah, we this we, so we, we were violent. We like, we like wrestled each other. And like it's it's <laughs> so all me and Ashley. good. Oh, yeah, you and Ashley fought. Yeah, because you know we're there's six years between Laura and the next one down, which is in between them. I'm the oldest, and so yeah. I didn't fight with Andrea, obviously, and I didn't fight yeah. with Ashley. Right. But Laura and I fought, and then the, the little two. girls fought. Yeah. 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 And so I do want to say, like, it wasn't like oh, we just have always gotten along perfect. Like yeah. you know, little kids fight. But also, I don't know, just don't let it, Yeah, know. There's never been any, like, deep fights. No, no. Just no, the kind of fights that, yeah. No, yeah. No. <laughs> I went the remote Very fire. normal. You ate the last bowl of cereal. <laughs> stupid, yeah. Stupid, stupid, stupid things. Okay, let's see here. I don't know if we want to get into the, why do you choose to have a large family question? Because I know, Andrew, you don't have a large family yet, because you're 
Well, she's just starting out. Um, starting out. Who knows? Iowa's <laughs> large family. Laura's. Oh yeah. Okay. So why do Laura? Why do you choose to have a large family? <laughs> because I always, I always wanted a large family. Like when I was a kid. Yeah. It's like ten kids. Yep. And I have ten kids. <laughs> Yeah, yeah tw- 20 all twins. Yeah. <laughs> we asked Laura's daughter how many kids she wanted. She said 20 all twins. So <laughs> if people think that she hates her large family yeah, life, no, being the oldest loves daughter, it. not true. Yep. Yeah, Laura has always, always had a loved baby. babies. Since we were little yeah. kids, yeah. she was, you know, taking the little cousins around. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I can't say I was ever... I'm not a natural baby person. You like your I mean, own babies. Yeah, like your own babies. <laughs> I like your babies. I love all your babies. I, yeah. I'm not against babies. Yeah. But it doesn't come as naturally to me as it does. And it always has to you. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, once I got into just family life, you know, all things home, it just, I loved every part yeah, of it. so fun. And that's how you're feeling right now is you're new to all this. Yeah. I mean, this is a new phase of life. And you're <sighs> really taking, like, in your home and being a mom you're, it's the best. Yeah. So I fun. like, people don't tell you that while you're pregnant with your first. They yeah. tell you about how bad it's going to be. Yeah. But I feel like this has been like the best six months of my life. Yeah. And there it's was challenging so parts fun. right away, postpartum yes. and yes. You know, all of that good stuff. Yes. Which but, I think there's some questions about that. Oh yeah. Okay. We can get to those. But as far as like you and like now having this home as your domain, caring for it, planning recipes, decorating it, caring for your daughter you know, it's a lot of that. fun. Yeah, there's a lot. That's the thing. There's so much with it that it's not like you're just doing one thing. There's a lot. Yeah. Like it's not boring. There's a lot. No, there's a lot. <laughs> not boring. Okay. <laughs> Laura, theory about why you have so many boys in a row. <laughs> I think we covered this last time, but that was yeah. like two or three boys ago. Yeah, two or three boys. <laughs> Our theory was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you want to get into that. Well, okay. Well, just because we were talking about last time, I remember we yes, okay. the fermented foods. So we diet, had a theory. But... We had a theory that when we first both got married, we both had daughters. And at that time, I didn't know a lot about, and Laura didn't know a lot about, like, fermenting your milk and having sauerkraut. And so we started to come up with a theory that when you consume certain foods, your body is either more alkaline or more acidic. Which and, is true. Like, which is true. Proof. And then, um, and, and not that we have a large enough sample size to say like, oh, but now we know it's not true because. Yeah. No, we, we yeah. don't know, but, but uh, we continue to have boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boys. So anyways, boys still, no matter what, they're still coming. But you eat some fermented food. I mean, not that like you have one girl, what do you do? It's not like. Yeah, I don't like, eat near <laughs> as much as you guys, but yeah, I do eat, I do eat some. Yeah. And, you, and you had a girl. So therefore, no, that's not how scientific no. studies are done. It's not a large scale. It's just a theory. You but yes, know. for those you who tell are us. new to the podcast, <laughs> yeah. I know we had a, a woman basically accuse us on YouTube of like, yes, doing and a comment. Something. Like, like what are you guys doing? You're doing, doing something. Like, yes, we are going and like having I medical things. things. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, never heard of that. I mean, it'd be nice to have another girl. It's not, you know, we're not doing anything, but. Laura and I, for those of you who are new to this podcast, um, if you're new to my channel and Laura's, between the two of us, we've now had 12 boys in a row. So I've had six in a row, and she's currently I'm pregnant, pregnant with her six in a row. What? So there is something Crazy. weird. Crazy, I still can't believe I'm <laughs> like six. I have six boys. Oh, yes. It is so weird. Taking a break to tell you about today's episode sponsor, Tubes & Co. I love my Tubes & Co. organic skincare. I love that in the products. There are no questionable ingredients that I wouldn't want to make its way into my skin, which is the body's largest organ. I'm very picky about skincare products because mostly for the ingredients that could be in them and affect my health. I take care to, you know, make food from scratch to source great ingredients. And then to put something on my skin that would completely negate that is not something that I want to do, but I also don't want to sacrifice quality In the past, I've even tried making my own skincare products, but as I get older, I am definitely noticing the need for high quality skincare products. I want them to be clean, but I also want them to really work. And lately I have been absolutely loving the toner and the glow serum. I put on the toner first. Well, first I wash with the sea buckthorn cleansing oil. Then I put on the toner. Then I put on the oil and I have been noticing just so much more hydration in my skin. That's my skin's 
biggest problem. And as I age, it's even worse. You can see all of the wrinkles and the lines whenever I'm not hydrated. And I really am loving the Tubes & Co products for that. I also love the makeup. I'm still getting better at figuring out concealer, but today I tried the concealer. I tried the eyeshadow, the foundation, the lip gloss, the eyebrow pencil. I just love it. From my entire look is all Tubes & Co. And those of you who are really great at makeup might be like, oh, well, you didn't do that great of a job. But I have to say that I'm getting better at it. And the products, they are quality. I can tell you that. I want to figure out how to do the, the highlighter and the bronzer, but I'm still getting there. I've tried it and then I've sort of failed. So I'm going to keep learning that. But can't recommend Tubes & Co. They're clean beauty products enough. They are offering you 15% off your order with the code FOB15. So that stands for Farmhouse on Boone, but FOB15 over at toopsandco.com. It'll also be linked down in the show notes or the description box below. Again, thank you so much to Toops and Co. for sponsoring this episode. Okay, we've got a few questions on have you come across any great advice for raising girls as they enter preteen slash teen years? I'm and not then- there yet. I'm there in mean, two teenage of. girls. My, my daughter's 11. Is that considered preteen? That's considered preteen. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so Caroline is preteen. I need the tips then because. I mean, so, and then also, so again, you tell us. <laughs> it also says, like, I don't. advice on sister bonding. So my two girls really, they're two years apart and they're teenagers now. They remind me so much of me and Laura. Laura and I are two years apart. And yes. our personalities Ruth is, is you and Johanna is me. Yes. Always. So, so there, funny. our personalities are very different. And my girls' personalities are very yeah, different. So I mean, different. they just are so different. So they just remind me so much of that because they want to do everything together. They fight. They do fight. I mean, they get under each other's skin big time. But I know they'll, I'm like positive they'll be best friends they'll, with their adults. They'll paint it out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't, I don't really know if I have any advice, but. I, I will well, make the again, they're just, they're just always together. You know, everything yeah. that they do is together. Like they, yes. they come as a pair, which they, I feel like was do. the same whenever we were kids, uh-huh. even whenever you were older and I went with you to all of your things. Like yeah, I, I, would, I came with you I said, to everything. I'll it was, go, it was Lisa and Laura. You're going to have to have my this, sister here too. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same with Ruth and Johanna. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. They do like. everything together. How about raising yeah. boys? We have tips on that. Do you? I don't know if I really have tips, but we... What do we know? I don't really have tips, I guess. I just, we know a lot about this. I actually had are, a lady on the podcast recently, her like expertise, because she has adult boys, five of them. So check boys. out that episode. To yeah, that. that's what I, um, I, I want to watch that. It was really I don't good. really have tips. They're just, boys are so different. From, I only have one girl, but having all sisters growing up and then you having girls, they're just, it's funny to see the difference. It is. And then and because then, Laura and I have sons all the same ages, because- We've had 12 in under 11 years. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it'll be 11 in under years, whenever this is Yeah, yeah. They all, you know, they see each other and they, all the time. they, they boy it up. Yeah, they do. Like, it's <laughs> just so funny. Like, the second they get together, it's like immediately wrestling. Yep, and they're on the floor. Fighting. And, I mean, not like fighting in like a, we're mad, we hit you. Like, that's how they fun, do it. And, and, the the girls girls are and not all boys, but this is definitely how a lot of that's boys how do our, it. That's how our, well, I guess we're 11 and we don't have 12 yet, but soon to be 12. But that's how all of ours are. Even, even my baby, like, I'm not kidding. Jacob was doing that to Clara. And Colorado, yeah, she's like, immediately like on top of her uh-huh. and she was crying. And I'm like, dude, you can't do this. You're just one. How do you already know to wrestle? <laughs> uh huh. Which is natural. It's pretty funny. It was really funny. Okay. What are your favorite things about being a mother? We're going to come to the perspective from somebody who's been a mother for a decade and someone or over a decade and someone who's been a mother for not long. Six months yeah. now. Yes. Favorite thing? Laura loves being a mom. She's, I do. I love she, my it. dad I calls love... her professional mom. Because <laughs> she's, she's all so what, fun. what would you do to be, earn that? I forget. I had so much sleep. He did something. No, like, like, oh. you, she, she no, you earned that title before that. Oh, okay. It was, was long I, before Did that. I put someone to sleep or something? <laughs> I don't know. I did something. But, I mean, dad wasn't kidding. He was like, she's <laughs> a professional mom. <laughs> oh I don't feel like it was a joke. It was like, he really felt oh like, you know what? You're good at that gig. <laughs> she keep this up mm. so i don't know i would say like my favorite thing is like just packing them up and going somewhere for like the whole day like 
Going to, if it, depending on the season, like going to the pumpkin patch, going to the pool. Yeah, I always love that. Going too. to the park and just having like a full day of like being out with the kids. I just love that. I, I actually do too. And for some people that so sounds fun. really stressful. But like when Laura and I get together, like we took all of our, let's see, 14 kids to the zoo. Yeah. And, and you were there too. Yeah. Yeah, you she were there, there too. too. We all do. We have 15 kids. And it's just, yeah. that's just like, to me, like the whole day and like. I love it. Yeah. Packing yeah. lunch and we're eating food while we're out and it's out for the whole day. And I don't know. Those There's are my, so much freedom there. Yeah. Like it's like, it you don't get to do that if you're not a stay at home mom. Mm-hmm. It's you so know? fun doing stuff like that. So yeah. That's really fun. And then like holidays with kids. It's just so fun. I can't wait. Yes. That's and so fun. Like, you know, she knows what How she excited they get on. about just, you know, the little things. Yes, yes. My new mom perspective is much tackier. It's so fun to meet your, like, a human. Yeah, I mean, it's, you it's know. It's so fun. It's like, like, and then, you and but, yeah. your husband. Yeah, you're and, like, like well, like. I've never, like, had a human, the, the, like, you know, every second of every day. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I and only see person. them from, like, my nieces and nephews, and so I'm like, ah, oh, you change a lot. Right, It's, like, right. really a lot of fun. Yes, yes. Do you have a routine for self-care or just fit it in where you can? What would you all say about that? Motherhood is busy. I mean, Homemaking is busy. I don't know what's considered self-care, but there's definitely a time in every day where I have, I mean, not myself, but with Nathan, you know, my husband and I, at the end of the day when the kids are in bed where we like watch a show and eat ice cream. and I think that counts. You know, like that, he, he massages my feet. Like yeah. that, that's my self-care. That's self-care. And it's uh-huh. like something I look forward to all day, like, oh yeah, at the end of the day. <laughs> we get yeah. time. But there's not really like a set schedule. Or anything. No, I don't know. I'm thinking anything. like self care. I'm thinking of like pampering and like yeah, skin care yeah, and like know, doing my nails or something. To do that during that time. Yeah, I you could. Could. Yeah. This is just what you enjoy. Yeah. You know? I like mm-hmm. having some downtime at the end of the day. Yeah. And even with a large family, a lot, a lot of kids, we still get that every day. Mm-hmm. There's still a time when everybody is asleep and we're up for a couple mm-hmm. hours after. The last year. I know yours is different. You have more kids now. So we definitely I have kids not, that go but, to bed by yeah. eight ish. And right. we usually stay up till 10. So there's a couple hours yeah. in the evening where it's still just like, you know, that could totally be alone time or husband, wife time. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Yes. How about you? Do you feel like once you had a baby that there wasn't time in the day to like do things that you maybe did for yourself before you had the baby? No. I don't oh, okay. feel that way. <laughs> I don't. I think, I think you're alone in that. Not really. I don't. I actually people, yeah. literally, me and Joey just talked about it yesterday. We were like, why does it feel like we have more time now? It's just because maybe you're more home centered. Yeah, like you think don't about you don't you don't probably and... travel as much as you used to. No, I don't know. Yeah, or like, like run out to go out to dinner. Like you're you're yeah. in home more because of her. And so and then, I think you just have to value your time a little more. And so like when she's asleep, I get to do like a lot of things like because you know it's like when she's asleep, it's like you know that's, you're my one kid's asleep. You know what's funny is you said this before you had her, and I was like that's a bad plan. And here it's working out. What. You were like, I think I'll get, I'll get more, more done. done. Yeah. She said yeah, that. You did. Because you were like, because I think I'll, whenever you feel like you have to fit it in around a certain, and I was like, oh, that's how it's going to work out. But it really is working out that way. I feel like I get way more done. <laughs> okay. Like significantly more. Well, because you have a really set schedule and whenever she, yeah. sleeping, when the kids are sleeping, it's like you have this little window of time. Yeah. So you have to like bust but it out. But also you get it like every day. So it's not like before where your life is just kind of like you can do whatever you want. Having that structure. Yeah. You have a lot of structure. Like maybe, you know, naps and bedtimes gives you more like, you know what to expect. Yeah. I feel like, no, I feel like I'm like that question. I'm like, I don't know how to relate to that because I'm like, it, my whole day feels that way. Well, like, hey, so that mine is like when I'm just holding her and that's cute. Like, right. I'm like, oh, yeah. you're cute. Uh huh. And you have a good baby. Yeah, I do. She's a, she's she's a, good a baby. really good baby. As far as me, I mean, I'll sit in the bathtub a lot of times because my kids do stay up, like the older kids stay up later, but when the little kids are in bed and the big kids don't really need me, I'll sit in the bathtub. I don't know. I think people, because. You know, you show 20 minutes of your life and it's literally like yeah. footage taken throughout a week. People are like, okay, so you're up moving around doing stuff all the time. Because yeah. that's what I saw. I saw oh, that yeah. in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's like, such yes. a small part of our actual. Yeah. Weeks. And I'm, I, you know, like Lara jokes that sometimes she's going to put her camera on <laughs> and just sit there on her couch like this. <laughs> Because people always ask her if she rests. Yeah. yeah so like, do you want to watch me rest? Okay, that'd be an easy video to make. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is what I do at nighttime. Yeah. yeah. Eating my ice cream and like. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, but goodness. yeah, up during the day, you know, making food, there is that time every day. But then there's also time where, you know, the child needs to be held or, you know, lots of lots of variables. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like you can still. There's still downtime. Yeah, even when you're cooking from scratch. Like how you cook yeah. three meals a day from scratch. Yeah. How much time do you feel like you're spending in your kitchen? I don't know. An hour-ish <laughs> for each meal. Okay, I think like so for, for like cleanup, like yeah. preparing and cleaning back up. Right. Like an hour. It's like three hours. Yeah. So that leaves a lot of time. And then it does. Have, then you homeschool. So a lot of times people you don't homeschool, they want to know like how yeah. are you fitting that in too. Yeah. But, but like in a lot of it too, like you just revolve your day around the, like in the kitchen you yeah know, it's not like I'm standing there over like cooking all day there's like things you know you going on you like, do something then you run outside to do something else then you run back in to like stir and your kids something do their school at the kitchen table right most yeah yeah mostly. so you're it's kind of like yeah it's kind of all happening at once right okay yeah it's not like it's three dedicated hours of like standing over the stove and nothing else is happening and right. when that time I'm also doing laundry and you know, other things are happening. Okay. Yes. So tips for first baby and labor. Best ways to prepare for newborn and postpartum period. I don't know if you've shared a whole lot about your birth story on your channel. She Not didn't. You had to share a whole lot. But like <laughs> I shared a little bit on mine. It Andrea. wasn't I was because I was with her for her whole labor and yeah. delivery and things went Basically, Just she, not as went, expected. she went from wanting, like, starting off her home birth and ending in the hospital with a C-section. So things so definitely right. tur- turned. Yeah, it wasn't right. <laughs> it wasn't right. No, it was a, it was a great birth. Yeah, everything turned out great at the end, but a lot of ups and downs. I guess the thing yeah. is, is sometimes you can do everything right and still end up in a situation where there's emergencies, and we're thankful for modern medicine. I mean, right. I do have yeah. a tip if that happens. Okay, I will say. It. Whenever you are in the process, go as far as you can so that you don't regret it later. Like, I don't have okay. any doubt in my mind that I needed a C-section. Yeah, There's I no either. part of me that's like, well, maybe if we wouldn't have done this or that or the other they thing. they did everything. We did everything. And so I can walk away from that and not being like, mm, I should have changed that. Well, because what if, I tried if you this? would what have if done, I were yeah, gone a little that longer right in the this? beginning, we wouldn't have known. We wouldn't have known. I mean, yeah. And so I feel like even though, like, obviously now after it was so long and so just not good, it's the obvious answer is like, would you go back and get a C-section right away? I don't think I would. Because I think then I would be now here, like, doubt or... I could have had vaginal. I could have. Like, or I could have had a home birth and I didn't. And so I'm really glad we, we, like, I can walk away being like, that was just, that was just one where... We had to do it. Yep. Glad that there's modern medicine. Yeah. Now, but you still went through a lot of natural labor, like a lot, as yeah. Laura yes. also knows. Yeah. yeah. So how did you prepare to cope with We that? all three prepared the same way. One, two, three. Bradley, Bradley method. method. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And Andrea was, you did great at it. She oh, got up to. It's the move. And eight, yeah. eight centimeters for. By not moving. Yeah. It's the move. It's the move not to move. <laughs> it's the best. Um, without, I mean. Minimal pain, I would say yeah. for your first time you did really really well, and I not just getting an and not just getting to an eight centimeter and then be like all right C section like being at an eight centimeter for twenty four hours yeah is what happened to her, and so she was at very strong labor for a very long time and you handled each contraction really well using the Bradley method so that is absolutely it's the best Lisa and I can not preach the Bradley method yeah I know enough. it's the, I know it's the way to go yep I we've used it with all of our all of our natural births. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I won't even try for a water birth next time. Yeah. And like, I would I say each one, it. like, because because I've gotten better at the Bradley method, each birth has gotten better mm-hmm. because I've learned to relax even more. So look it up. Any, any deeper. Yeah. Yeah. And also some people get, you know, we're like, well, isn't that husband coach? And I thought you said that you don't really like the oh, husband. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is husband coach, but I just do We like, do it differently. I do, yeah. I mean, you had more, not really husband coach, but you. Me coached. Yeah. But- and, and that I feel was like really in helpful. the beginning, my first couple, I, I needed you. Mm-hmm. Like, my like first, my first Max and Will, I definitely wanted you there to, like, kind of how you were like, wait, one's coming, help me, you know, like, yeah. to relax. Yes. But then the last couple, I was able to do very much on my own. And so... Just using the principles of relaxing. Yes. Which sounds so easy. But until you're in until labor. You're in it. So like, it's something yeah. you have to practice, too. That's another <clears throat> huge tip, is not to just think, like, oh, it's... 
I'll figure it out when I'm, I'm in I'll labor. just start relaxing. Don't. You need to you need yeah. to practice 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 yeah. from like I don't know 20 I weeks practice, 20 yeah, weeks on like 30, ish 30 or whatever. Weeks on. Okay, I can't remember. Every night before bed. Yeah. Okay, tips on how to keep up with the demands of the household slash family during the third trimester of pregnancy. Laura, oh. you're not quite there, but almost. You've been there six yeah. other times. You were just there. I six months ago. Personally, <laughs> for me, that would be more like, how do you keep up with it in the first trimester? Yes, because yeah. same. I think yeah. we all agree, like, we have pretty smooth sailing pregnancies. Yeah, if I had to say which one was harder to get stuff done, it would definitely be the first trimester. With the third. Absolutely. For me. For, for me, me. For me, too. Always. I don't have really too much yeah. um, complaints about the third. But first trimester, I have very low, like, motivation, low energy, you know? First trimester, I think it's just um, you you do what you can. Just the bare minimum. The bare minimum. And you eat what you can. Like all health goes out the window. I know it's like the time now you're like growing a baby and you want to like eat all these healthy foods. But if you can't eat and you them, can't. And all if you, you is... if all you can eat is a Pop Tart, you eat a Pop Tart. Yeah. yeah. And if you I'm if, totally if, if you camp. want juice every day, like I I don't know any other way to do it except But then after just, the first trimester, you know, yeah, then you sometimes can get back you, you want to blame like pregnancy on like, well, I'm craving this. Like, I feel like you only get that pass in the first. Yeah. Yeah. That's just my personal belief. Per- me now, too. That's Absolutely. how it's been for me. I see and sometimes first yeah. goes well into the second, depending on. Yeah. Sometimes like into like 16, We're talking like my latest morning sickness. Morning sickness. Like yeah. was like yeah. 16 weeks. Yeah. But. Because sometimes that definitely goes into the <clears> second. But once the morning sickness is over, I'm I'm back to feeling Completely normal, just having a, a bump. Yeah, <laughs> like nothing and, else. And really. by the end, like I'll be sore at the end of the day. Like my physically, like my body feels it's tired. Sore. But like I can still pretty much get the same amount of stuff done. It's just at the end of the day when I sit down, it's like whoa. Yeah, <laughs> you can power through being sore. I, I can, but yeah, like the morning sickness, the fatigue. She's I just the like have no motivation. Lack of motivation. To, yeah, to power through. You don't that. want to do anything. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Just, so if you feel like that in the third, then probably the same that we feel in the first. Just bare minimum. Do, do what you it'll can. It'll be over with soon. Yeah, it'll be over with soon. Yeah, do, what, do what you can. Four and if you have to like buy convenience food and not cook, then go for it. Yeah. That's what I say. Like, yeah. you know, just you have to get through it just the best survive. that you can. Yeah, survive. All right, taking a quick break from this episode to tell you about my brand new course, Simple Sourdough. This one has been a long time coming. I have shared about sourdough over on my blog and my YouTube channel forever, but I finally compiled all of the information that you need to be successful with sourdough, uh, the starter, making your first ever loaves of bread, using the discard, so many things in my course, Simple Sourdough. You can find it at bit.ly slash farmhouse sourdough course. That's all one word, bit.ly by slash farmhouse sourdough course. The coolest thing about the new simple sourdough course is that there's a corresponding private Facebook group that is for students only. I'm really excited that that'll be a place where when you have specific questions, there'll be other students in there, sourdough enthusiasts, and we can all learn from each other. This is usually such a valuable asset because a lot of times you'll have a specific question that you don't want to filter back through the course for. It's all there, but sometimes you just want other people who are on the same journey as you. And I'm really excited to provide that course, which just the lifetime membership comes with the purchase of the simple sourdough course. Again, you can find that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse sourdough course. Okay, ways you run your home similar or different. Do you cook similarly or are you all more random and cleaning routines versus more scheduled? Okay. I so like as far we as all cook pretty similar. And right? as far as the schedules, I think we all I'm totally in the camp of like just clean when you see it. I don't yeah, really feel like it absolutely. saves me any time by making some kind of arbitrary schedule. Yeah. Personally. Do um, you do a that's schedule? That's too much for me. Because um, I, as a as a new mom with with only one and two kids, I had a schedule like laundry on Tuesday. She did a cleaning. Day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like Mondays. Oh, no, I Mondays know. I did all the bathrooms. Tuesday. Did didn't you do that? I did it first. I had it on my refrigerator. Oh, yes. I, I it didn't. I don't feel like it helped. But at the time, it, I think it was just wrapping my brain around like, okay, I'm in charge of this house. What I have to get it done. It felt very like a big deal. Like how am I going to do this? And then now, you know, 16 years later, as a homemaker and homeowner. I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, like I keep it clean, but right. just as I go, it doesn't have to, I don't have to dust on Tuesday. I didn't know if I it was, if it was like 
because of that, it didn't save me time or if it's because now there's not really time to have a schedule. Like, all right, today's bath. It's just like, if I'm in the bathroom and I see like pee on the floor from the boys, wipe like, oh, like, quick, for clean, the laundry. Yeah. done. Like, you know, I like, just grab a towel and wipe it up and yeah. And when the laundry's full, I run it because I don't have like as much time to put into that and thought and yeah. So I don't know if it was that or if it really is just more efficient to like, obviously you see something out and you put it away. I don't know yeah. if either one's, you know, either way you're doing the job just yeah. when you get it done. So like, do you have a cleaning day? Mm-mm. Okay. I didn't think you so. You as clean as you go. I mean, yeah, your house is very If clean. I notice the house being dirty, I will, I do work through it room by room. Like I don't, I like whenever I can get like one room done. And then that when you're like, like deep cleaning, like going around the base, just and, like, no, clean, like clean. just like when stuff, a lot of stuff is out like that. Okay. I don't like that. And so I'll just be like, okay, the kitchen, like so all this like, are done. Tidy. Everything's done. Mm-hmm. And then like, I like when I can at least have one space that's mm-hmm. like looking good. Yes. I, I typically like the kitchen needs to be. Yeah. Same. Like I'm okay if the kids rooms are a little bit messed up. Yeah. But I need like my kitchen. And then if I'm, if I'm feeling, you know, a little overstimulated, like the living room too, like the areas right. that I can see, you know, needs to be perfect. That's yeah. how I feel too. Yep. Yep. Also yeah. with like meal planning, I know you said as a new cook, you have to plan more. Than I do. I do. I have to plan more one. Cause I'm not nearly as experienced. And so like you have to follow the recipe. Kind. I, mean, I getting, don't follow it exactly. I get getting better at veering off, but like I definitely, if I saw like a head of cauliflower in my fridge, I wouldn't like know what to do with it. Okay. Deal. And we have to we have to plan because we can't buy like we can't buy carrots, cauliflower, and celery all in the same week. It'll some of it'll go bad. Oh right, definitely. You only have two that liters. Is, that we only have two liters. Tanner, yeah. Nine, and so like we have to be eight. really <laughs> careful about what we lay out and like what we get because like. If we get more than like one fruit, it goes bad. Okay. Like one bag of fruit. Yeah, it that's goes something I haven't thought about in like yeah, 15 nothing years. Nothing yeah. goes bad. Yeah. And I think another reason why we all cook very similar is because we all get our meat from our other sister that's not here. Yeah. And so we get all the different cuts. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. like we're going to the store and buying like 10 pounds of ground beef. We buy a half of a steer at a time. And so you end up having the soup bones, you have the the roast, the steaks, the, you know, yeah, all the different all cuts. Stuff. And so you have to, I don't, I don't think like everybody cooks well, with you all maybe, different maybe types Maybe more of you meat. like come no, with a meal plan, not. go to the store, get the cuts of meat you need for the meal yeah. plan as opposed to this is what I have. Yeah. How do I prepare Right. This? Like whenever yeah. we're starting to like run low in the freezer, you probably like, okay, I have a brisket, stew meat, and soup bones uh-huh. that have to be used up. And so you kind of cook off of what we have. And we always right. have all the similar types of cuts yeah. yes so we cook yeah. pretty similarly i and definitely that's from our mom like, yeah 100 when we grew up like my mom never bought meat from the grocery store ever no We've always got from the fair for that it's always been yeah. in bulk mm-hmm. yes and with i know the they're cuts. gonna ask so newhartfordfarmco.com that's our sister yep and she, she does ship. she does ship i get chicken from her too like pretty regularly because chicken pork and beef yeah mm-hmm. so yeah i guess you tend to come up with like I feel like Laura and I sometimes do more like meat vegetable, you know, very basics, and you tend to come up with some more like yeah, fun I mean, recipes. Do, yes, funner. More I think fun. that's just because we're pickier. Well, I, maybe. and maybe because you're you're cooking for a smaller crew, yeah. so you could you can make your like I would cook differently not just cooking for me and Luke. Huh? Yes, yeah. I do. Like yeah. on I would nights, we fun. put the kids to yeah. bed and we do like an in home date night. I don't yeah. make what I would make for the family. You're making whereas, like, like, like garlic herb butter. Yes, and ribeye. yeah, right. Yeah. We but do when, that. But we whenever that. you're cooking for a bigger family, it's so easy just to throw like you know do a whole a chicken. stew or a whole chicken or yeah. like a big thing of roast with potatoes and carrots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's just because of where you are, like your stage of life. So okay, because I've been thinking the same because we're just like extremely picky. But I mean, we're not though. We're you're not really picky. not. It's no. just if you have the choice, you know. If I have like, I would the rather eat all the stuff choice. that you're making. I just yeah. if, I, if I had to make because you guys make so many pizzas and fun pizzas, I would have yeah, to make do. like ten pizzas. Yeah, you're right. To that feed my work. family. Lauren's so, family yeah. also eats more than mine. Yeah, I have a really <laughs> so FYI, meat. I have the bigger family, but mm-hmm. Laura's family eats way more. I'm like, I have some ten pizzas. I can't even finish four. My kids I have just some don't boys that, that like have. It's funny. It's like a running it's joke, a joke in our family. family. Like, they're like, oh, the ashes are coming. If the ashes are coming, yeah, we have to throw it's like more. How many birds do they if they're coming versus if? Like, yeah, <laughs> my mom on Sundays will text and see who's coming, and if there's certain <laughs> members of my family come to go, I'll put out two extra pounds. <laughs> That's so funny. That's oh true. man. Okay, we probably only can take like two more because Laura and I have to get our kids from somewhere. Yeah, we have more, um, more kids. <laughs> 
Do you compare yourself to the successes of each other? How do you not feel intimidated by the successes of siblings? In feel inspired rather than pressure to live up to them. I don't really feel like. Yeah, I, I definitely I don't. don't. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like we I have... feel lazy around you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do all that. I'm not planning on doing any of that. <laughs> Except you totally do. But uh, not to. Not here, I got you on a podcast. Now you're podcasting yeah, whether you podcasting. want to or not. <laughs> it is like, yeah, I'll step back. I don't care. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't, I think Ashley would say the same. I don't think any of us can. No, I think we all just other. kind of have our own things going on, you know, like yeah. we all have. Even though we're doing similar things, it's still different and I'm not. I and find it's, it more and it's, okay. It's and very we've fun. all come yeah. in at different stages, and so yeah. I know not to compare myself to you because you've been doing it longer. And then yeah. same with you; like yeah. I've been doing it longer than you. And Ashley has a business in a completely different yeah, yeah, way. way. And so I also, it's just so fun. Like to have, it, yeah, to run ideas off yes, each other. It's really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were able to be like, okay, what do you think about this picture for this? And mm -hmm. you know, what do you think about this name or whatever, or this idea? And it's so it's, if you guys, you know, if you weren't doing that, we wouldn't be able to run all those ideas. And yeah, it's just yeah. Fun. maybe that's something to do with mom and dad too. Mom yeah. and dad never, ever act like they compare us. They just get really excited for all of us. That's true. And I wonder if maybe that the people that would ask that question have maybe used parents. Like maybe they. That there's like a golden child or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, Which like, we, that's that very far from our brains. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. That's true. That's true. Okay. Let's see here. How do you, how do you stay cheerful and not overwhelmed in your home? So like, there's a couple in that kind of go along with that. Like, being overwhelmed, there being a lot going on, because you mentioned, you know, there's a lot to do in your home. How do you keep that fun as opposed to overwhelm, overwhelming by all of that? Are there times when it does? I think it's just perspective and like, you know, in it, each situation, you're like, all right, this can be really stressful or it doesn't, you can make it. Do you ever be. feel overwhelmed, Laura? I don't feel like you do. Yeah. No, I, yes, I feel overwhelmed, but a lot of times I'll like step back like, this doesn't matter. It's yeah, fine. Like, if and we, like if literally, this, I'll get this cleaned yeah. up tonight. Yeah, exactly. Those kind of things. Yeah. Like all of a sudden you look around like, oh my gosh, my house. Or like just recently when we got back from vacation, we just got back from Colorado and we got home at one in the morning and all of our suitcases, you know, we had like wet snow gear in the yeah. suitcases and I had a lot of catching up to do from missing a whole week of being gone like, with like YouTube, YouTube videos and stuff. Business and, yes. Yeah. And then also like... There were some of my kids didn't go and say to my husband. I couldn't wait to, for them to wake up to see them. And I was like, oh, and like you want to sleep in? And, and I would be yeah, like all these things. And I'm like, but it actually doesn't matter. And like in like three days, it's all going to be normal again. Yeah. And it, yeah. yeah. And it's only been what? What is like two days? Is Has it like been two, two or three days? Did we go home Monday night late? So Tuesday went. So this is day three. Yeah. And yeah, it feels like I've already like, been home for that's like, been a long three time weeks. Ago. I'm totally <laughs> caught up. The uh -huh. snow stuff is clean and put away. Yeah. The suitcases are returned to the people we borrowed. I'm from like okay i think like you have perspective andrew how does that not happen to you i feel like i get overwhelmed just as okay. so much as well maybe not just as so much as anyone else but yeah. like i feel like sometimes you do i do th i do also think the way you think about it makes a big difference it was very overwhelming at first like because i was not used to getting interrupted and now you do get no you do get interrupted with a kid like you know they just need a nurse or do something yes and i feel like bef like it did take a little bit of me being like being a mom is the number one job. Mm -hmm. And so just like the time Putting that I get to do the other stuff is like, great. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's Where, really rather than like being a mom is this annoying side thing and I have to do this. You know what I mean? Like kind of shifting it to where like, no, this is the most important thing. Right. And there's enough do. time in your day to care for those basic things. Like Definitely. if you have your priorities Definitely. in line and you're not trying to add on. Yeah. I think that helps. And it just takes a while when you're not used to getting interrupted. Yes. Because I was not used to, like, you know, of course, I was didn't have any kids. I didn't yeah. interrupt it ever. Like, and it's worth noting, though, that you still find things worth doing. I get asked that a lot, too. Like, well, you know, how do you do this when you get interrupted? I'm like, I still just do it. Like, mm -hmm. it just means yeah. it's going to take longer. Like, it's still right. worth yeah. doing. Like, it's still worth you. You're all excited right now learning to sew. Yeah, so it's um, worth doing. It's still, like, you're getting worth interrupted. Make, making the bread or cooking what else yeah, are you going to do? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, with, you know, with like if you're a new mom with one kid, kind of like they sleep a lot. That's true. I Babies mean, do. That's the magical what you, thing. What else and you when do? you're home all day, I always say this too, like, you know, whenever you spend all your time at home, this is all that we do. 
Yeah. And so you have a lot more time. Yeah. If you're trying, trying to like, like run, if, to, you know, like if you have a, a job outside of the home and you're spending like hours and commuting and like, I don't know, like this, this, our home and our families is what we do. Yeah. yeah. And so if you're at a different starting point, which sometimes, you know, you're asking that question from a different starting point that maybe, you know, in what your situation, it is really overwhelming, you know? So, but from your, what you're doing, you've have it set up to where it's mm -hmm. kind of a gentle schedule. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Just don't take, maybe don't take on as much. Like you're saying, like just some stuff, just like, yeah, you, you get in your head that it really yeah. matters and then it, it doesn't. Okay. So lately you've added YouTube. How is that affected it or are you any more overwhelmed or is it more just like a nice creative outlet for you? I feel like I was getting bored. So it's honestly like a really creative outlet. But then there's also like there is the pressure of like getting home from Colorado and being like, I got to do something this week. Yeah. Like that something that's like before. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can't just record me doing nothing. Like I kind of had to do like something. Like a project like or paint yeah, a cabinet. Like paint a cabinet. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, that's that is like a thing that I wouldn't have done before. But well, as long as you two can just keep it where like if something goes off the rails it's not like the end of the world if you don't you know yeah yeah i definitely have to find myself with youtube like i definitely will like be like this room needs to be clean I'm like no it doesn't there's other things like yeah like, it's not that big of a deal like things like that for sure yep okay well we got a lot more questions and we could sit here but we can't, can't so we could but we can't <laughs> we gotta be on the road in two minutes <laughs> yes we have to leave yes. Yes. no no <laughs> later oh, Yep. Well, we okay. Go. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life Podcast. Again, if you aren't already following Laura at Our Oily House, check her out. She shares homemaking. She has a you know large family as well. And then Andrea over at Our Sweet Sunny Days. She, you're gonna love her home. You're gonna love her food. So go on and check that out as well. All right. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next episode.